Let's talk tides. As gradual as those rises and falls can be, they're impressive in some places and barely noticeable in others. To find the main culprit, we have to look an average of nearly 239,000 miles away. The gravitational pull of the moon actually pulls Earth's water in its direction. It has a pull on land as well, but that's much harder to budge. The bulge on the lunar side results in a high tide, and you'd think that means the opposite side is low tide, but not so fast. Here's how the moon's pull shakes out at different points on our planet. There are differences in gravity all over Earth's surface, and that pull at each point minus the average results in the overall tidal force. That gives a weird squash and stretch effect, hence why there are two high and two low tides per day as Earth makes one rotation, but the side closest to the moon will still be the highest tide. But wait, there's more. The shape of everything from the coastline to the seafloor can influence how extreme or small a tide gets. The Caribbean Sea has one of the lowest tidal differences, just a few inches between high and low. But the infamous V-shaped Bay of Fundy between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia sees a tidal difference about 53 feet during a full moon phase. What about tides and hurricanes? Many of us here in Arizona have family on both coasts and follow hurricanes closely. When it comes to storm surge flooding, a hurricane that makes landfall right at high tide is often much worse than a low tide landfalling hurricane. For this week's Science Source, I'm Pete Mangione.